So this video is going to be kind of a status update and information on where I'm at on the 1702 uh, EEPROM board for my uh, Altair 8800. So here we've got a picture of the board. We've kind of uh, been through this board a few times in other videos, but I'll give you a, a quick overview. I've only got one EEPROM, you know, 1702 in the machine at the moment, and it starts at address FF00. The other sockets are all empty. We've, of course, got our 7805 5-volt regulator here. We've got a 7908 minus 8-volt with its ground offset by a volt by these two resistors here to produce minus 9 volts that the uh, 1702s need. So one of the issues I ran into initially was I got all eight of the EEPROMs programmed and I got the card in the machine and I couldn't boot the machine and I felt like I should have been able to boot the machine and fought and fought and used the front panel and compared what I'd programmed to the uh, programming sheets and just couldn't figure it out and finally went all the way back to looking at the original hex dump I used to produce the programming sheets and realized that was the wrong hex file. It was for a completely different monitor and wasn't the monitor I wanted. I, I want the Altera monitor or Altmon uh, in ROM here along with some additional uh, uh, things added to it. Uh, so that was really disappointing and seemed to explain at least why it wouldn't boot. I uh, then produced a, a, a hex listing of the ROM image I wanted. I programmed the bootloader in this device up here, stuck it in the machine, wouldn't boot, mucked and mucked and mucked. I looked at it from the front panel, couldn't see any mistakes, uh, became concerned that maybe the board just wasn't working as expected. Maybe the weight state generator we talked about with the... Actually, where's the flip-flops? Uh, right here. We've got the two flip-flops to generate a weight state because of the slow ROMs. Maybe that wasn't working. Uh, I, I had thoughts about maybe the uh, signal on the bus that I drive to tell the machine to wait wasn't strong enough and the CPU wasn't waiting. I went through a whole lot of stuff here. And really couldn't figure it out and and from there I decided my best approach was to modify the schematic we looked at uh, in the original you know build of this and, and the changes over here so what I've done is I've taken a11 and I've inverted it with one of the extra inverters we had and the effect that has is it moves the memory space that this board occupies down by 2k so it goes from the upper 2K of memory to the next block down below that 2K of memory. Uh, if we take a peek at a memory map here, we end up with this. So I'm using a floppy disk controller plus board uh, for my machine. It's got onboard ROM with the Altmon in it. That Altmon that's in that board is what I wanted to emulate, or I, you know, actually have a copy of, so I'm booting from the actual 1702s. Uh, if you look in the uh, FDC Plus manual, you'll find this little section that talks about there's a 2764 EEPROM on it. And an FF00 was the combined disk bootloader. And right now, that's the code I'm focused on. So really, I'm focused on the 256 bytes here at the top in memory. And this 256 bytes here uh, on the subunit ROM board, and these 256 bytes should match these. The idea is to, to, to program this into here. And then, of course, you can put other things in here. Uh, the FTC Plus has different bootloaders, hex loader, and the Altmon. So that took me off to looking for a hex dump of the contents of the 27C64. And I honestly couldn't find anything that had the entire hex dump with all these pieces of code in it. And I could have pulled the EEPROM out, stuck it in one of my EEPROM programmers, read it, and produced a hex file, but I was too lazy to go dig out an EEPROM programmer. So I decided maybe the way to approach this instead was to actually just dump the ROM contents. So we're on the Altair 8800. We are booted into CPM. And we're going to look at how I generated the ROM dump and then validated what I had programmed in the 1702 was correct. So there's two basic programs here, ROM dump, and ROM check. And let's go ahead and load up a ROM dump. Actually, I need to get into MBASIC first. You can probably hear the floppy drive being accessed behind me. That's one of the 8 inch drives. Load ROM dump. 
desktop base. Let's list it. What I've got a, is a program here that produces a hexadecimal dump uh, of the FTC Plus ROM. And in this case, I'm dumping the entire ROM image, the entire upper 2K of memory. So this address here represents the first address in the upper 2K of memory. And this will get me to the top of RAM. And this is going to step by 16. I'm going to print that address out in hexadecimal, print out a colon. And then I'm going to step through 16 bytes. I'm going to peek at where this address is plus this offset. I'm going to go sub 200, which basically formats that value in hex. Uh, if the value is less than a hex, it needs to have a leading zero put in. And this is just going to loop here uh, and end. So let's go ahead and run this, and I'll show you what I ended up with. So it looks you know, like a very standard hex dump. Uh, remember that the ROM card starts at address, the FTC plus ROM card starts at address F800. And what this produced for me was just this ROM dump. It gave me all the hex values in that ROM. I'll just leave this running here. And if we take a look at this sheet here, this is where I took this ROM dump, copied it out, dumped it into Notepad and then wrote some notepad++ macros that reformatted it into the format I use for the uh, 10 or 1702 EEPROM programmer because it programs two bytes at a time with an 80 hex offset this sheet just organizes it so I toggle in these 16 bits program the next 16 bits and what this produced for me was finally that combined disk boot loader hex dump which was represented on this page I then went up programmed the 1702 EEPROM, stuck it in the board as we saw with the uh, board address offset by uh, the, the, the 2K space. So let's go ahead and close this program out here and load ROM check dot basic. And what this program does is compare the address space of the upper 2K of RAM, the FTC plus ROM, to the next 2K space down below to see if there's any differences. And in this case, I'm only going to loop over those 256 bytes where the combined disk boot loader would be. So we have an address block that does that. Uh, we can see that 63232 starts at F700, the first byte of my 1702 board, and loops through to the last byte of the 1702 board. RD gets loaded with the contents of the 1702 board. RN with the equivalent byte in the FTC plus ROM. Prints out the hex address. Does the same formatting to get these uh, into zero filled hexadecimal. If it detects an error, uh, you know, a difference, it prints out error. And loops till it's done. So let's dump or do the comparison of those 256 bytes. And you're going to see, as you saw there, the word error scroll by. Again, this is debugging I'm actually doing on the Altair because I can get it booted. I'm curious, you know, so it, it came down to, wow, there's uh, some programming errors I made when I toggled in the code. So I've captured th this text because I was curious to see if I could understand what I was doing wrong. And that's captured right here. And we can see that at address F702, I have a B3 and the 1702 ROM, and it should have been a D3. Okay, that's interesting. A BB, it should have been a DB. Hmm, that's interesting. A B3, and I got a D3. So this is three cases where I should have had a D, and I toggled in a B by accident. B3, D3, again a case where I toggled in a B rather than a D. And one more case where I again substituted a D for a B. So the issue seems to truly be with me where I just can't toggle in a D consistently on, on the front panel switches. You know, and that's really all the errors I had. And so if we look at a hex, or actually a binary B and D, and these are, of course, the column bit weight values, D is going to be 8 plus 4 plus 1, and B is uh, 8 plus 2 plus 1, 8. 9AB or 8, 9ABC, D. It's just me, for some reason, when I'm putting in a D, 
getting those two switches backwards. So it's actually kind of an interesting find and it gives me something I can focus on to try again. Uh, it's really frustrating because as I say I programmed up eight full ROMs with the wrong hex dump that were in the end worthless. I've had 172 fail mid-programming. Uh, there's some high voltages on the part during programming and that, that ROM just gave up the ghost and failed. Uh, it's been frustrating. It took a lot of passes to actually get a ROM programmed to what I thought was correct. And part of that was me just getting comfortable again with hex and the binary representation and getting the switches flipped. So I'm going to go up today and reprogram this ROM and keep focus on the fact that I substitute B's for D's. And I should be able to get through this. You know, I find this one really interesting. Should have been a DB and I've got in a BB. And I just didn't see it. You know, the rest of these is a D3 versus B3, D3 versus B3, D3 versus B3, and a B2, D2. You know, it's just astonishing to me that, you know, you know I consistently made those five mistakes. Uh, so this really is the update. So the other thing this basic program has proven is that I'm reliably reading the uh, ROM on the 1702 board. I actually let this loop overnight looking just for errors specifically. Uh, you know, just to see what would happen. And uh, if we go in here and add line 35, if RD, if RD equals RN, then go to I think 110, next AD. If we run this, it'll just dump the errors. And like I say, I let this run overnight. Of course, 120. Just to go back to line 10. So I left it in this state, just running overnight. And the errors were consistent. You know, the five bytes that are bad were always bad. Uh, all the other bytes were good. And what this says to me is we're reliably reading the 1702 EEPROM on my 1702 card on the 8080 bus at the, at the speed the machine's running. This says to me the weight state generator is, is working. As these ROMs are, you know, right at about the speed of the 8080 and, and, and uh, actually a little slower. I need some delay. So, you know, this gave me confidence the board design is solid. And it's acting as it, as it should. It just comes down to me not being able to toggle in B versus D. Anyhow, I hope that quick status update was uh, at least interesting. And we'll talk soon.